Hello and welcome to Quirky Cat Crafts. This is Sherry. Okay, you guys. I know it's been a hot minute since I've been around. Um, been dealing with some stuff and just wasn't wasn't mentally in a crafty mood. And you guys know that if you're not in the crafty mood, you can't force it. So, um, but I am in a crafty mood tonight. So I'm going to bring you along on this project and tell you the inspiration behind it as we go along. Okay, so this is going to be a picture frame that is a dog theme. And I'll tell you more about the recipient as we get going here as well, okay? So I've started kind of playing with laying it out. You guys know that layouts are never locked in stone and this will probably change, but um, the recipient for this, um, picture frame, um, their, their dog, they lost their dog, um, back in October. So this is kind of a, in memory of, and so we're going to start up here at the top with the mirror tile and I'm going to glue on the little heart with the wings and then do the dog's name, which is Riley, um, and stickers on that. And that'll be centered at the top. And then at the bottom, and I know this is hard to see until I get them stamped out, but um, once I start stamping them, you'll get a better idea. But this little stamp is a very, very close representation of Riley. And so I'm going to stamp him out and probably give him a quick hit with the mica powders. And then right below it, same tile, I think. I'm going to do one big tile. Um, I have this little stamp that's XOXO, and the O's are paw prints, so, and that'll be centered at the bottom, okay? Um, I have two stickers, and the glue is still drying on these, but, um, again, a very close representation of Sweet Little Riley, um, and then it's on just silver glitter paper with the glass cabochon on top. And glued down and then of course I need a second sticker I can't just have one and I found this one that is a uh, just like a dog tag that says friends forever and I like the fact that it was red because it tied in the red from my little button down here so these are gonna go somewhere on the sides here like this okay I've got in addition to the metal piece on the mirror I've got two silver hearts and a dog bone and a paw print. I'm primarily going blues and silvers on this uh, frame. I don't know why, that's just the vibe I feel like I need to go with. So, um, and I have a bunch of different colors of clay pulled out and we'll go over those here in a minute. But I think the silver charms, because they're pretty, you know, blingy on their own, are just gonna go on this um, Sculpey Primo, just straight navy. So those four will be in the navy. And then the buttons, which I have a dog house, a dog food dish, a bone, and another cute little dog that button that's kind of sort of close. Not as close, but it's cute. So, and I think I'm going to do those on my galaxy glitter, which is the blue, navy blue with the silver, white, and gold glitter mixed in for the four buttons. Okay, so regular navy blue and navy blue glitter, okay? Then I've got a lot of stamps pulled here and I don't know that I'm gonna use all of them but I'm gonna stamp them all out and we'll see how it starts looking when it comes together. But there are four phrases. This one says, love rescued me. This one says, our best friends leave paw prints on our hearts. This one says, pets are family. And this one says, love is a four-legged word. And so those four are going to be, I think I'm going to stamp them on the navy pearl with silver ink. And we're going to see how that comes out. Because, um, of course, I want to make sure they're readable. So that's what I'm thinking for those four. Okay, and then the other stamps are, we've got dog leash, a ball, uh, like a ball and rope toy, 
a dog bed, a rope toy, dog shampoo, collar, a can of dog food, a rawhide bone, dog tag, um, dog brush, um, and a frisbee. So, again, I don't know that I'm going to use them all, but I don't know which ones I'm going to want to use, so we're going to stamp them all out. And I'm going to stamp those out on um, silver clay. Not silver glitter, but just plain silver clay. And I'm going to stamp them with navy blue ink. So, um, that's what those are going to get stamped on. Um, then I've got uh, blue stone souffle, which is like a light bluish gray color. Remember that the souffle cuts really well after baking. So I'm going to use it for um, my um, leafing. And I'm going to do silver leafing with um, this paw print impression. So, um, you know, and I'll just make a big sheet of it where I can cut it down to tuck into places that I need to fill in. And then the last thing that I have pulled which I'm not sure about. Because I have this stamp set of like dog silhouettes. And I feel like I feel like this one, this one, this one, maybe, maybe these two standing and sitting where um, it's kind of a Poodly cockapoo, maybe. I'm not 100% sure what type of dog it is, but I, that's the impression I'm getting. Um, so, you know, curly, froofy with the floppy, floppy ears. And so I might do those two silhouettes. And if I do choose to do them, I'm going to do them on silver glitter clay to pull in the silver glitter paper. So, um, and I might find four on here that I like to want to use. Or I might do two of the silhouettes and then do um, maybe the paw print and dog bone or something. I don't know. I'll probably do, probably just do the, a couple of silhouettes. I don't know where I would put them. Um, but we'll see when we get to that far. So, um, notice that I've got the, the red here. So I have this red down here to kind of balance it out and then also so we've got the dog stamp here dog sticker here dog button here so that they're spaced out and then I tried to keep like the bones are separated and I just have the one paw print because I'm going to be doing the silver leafing paw print and then of course I'll also fill in with you know either my little glitter tiles or my stained glass tiles or possibly the peel and stick so we'll have to see you guys I went I fell down a rabbit hole so bad here about a month ago when I decided I needed to sell off some of my excess craft supplies and I overdid and basically decimated my craft room I took apart a lot of my storage solutions I had stuff all bagged up, ready to put it out for sale, and now I'm changing my mind. And so I'm going to have to put it all back. But for right now, my craft room is a disaster area, which is probably part of the reason I haven't been in here. Can't really be creative in chaos, but um, I'll also warn you real quick, we are having off and on thunderstorms here tonight, and um, so that is upsetting my cat Opie, so you may hear him griping in the background. Garfield, on the other hand, my other cat, is over on the futon snoring his head off. So that may pick up I'm on the camera. I'm not sure if it will or not. But just fair warning on that. So, all right. Um, let's see. So I said I was going to do these four with silver ink on the navy pearl. And the buttons... We're going on the galaxy glitter and the silver items. It's probably
probably should have taken a picture of this before I started and did this, but I um, guess I have the video to fall back on, right? So on the straight navy. Okay. Um, I have to decide what color I want to stamp this on. What did I say I was going to do? Light silver, right? With navy blue ink? Yeah. And that's for all of this. But these are just going to be straight blue ink. I mean, there's a little bit of detail, but not enough to really warrant coloring. So, and I don't know what's going on with this one. Look, you guys. It's like, like disintegrating. I don't know what's going on with that. Very sticky. Very weird. All right. And the ball, and then this, and the bed, and this, and all of these are getting stamped on this color. I'm going to take these off because the glue is still drying. Set them off to the side. Sorry if my head's in there. The mirror tile will be the last thing I do. So I'm going to set that aside. And the leash. Okay, so I'm going to get the frame out of the way for the moment. Did, did I mention that my room is a disaster? I have, like, nowhere to put anything. This is just ridiculous. All right. Cutting board. And let's start with the embedding and go from there. So, all right. So, what's been going on with me? Okay. Um, I'll do it real quick. Um, on these theme buttons, you guys, and I know I've covered this before, but um, with the loops on the back, you can just use uh, shank cutters and cut them off. Don't cut them all the way to the bottom because you want a little bit of something to stick into the clay to get, you know, so the clay has something to hold on to. So, um, I don't even know where to start on what's been going on, but so let's just talk about the recipient of this frame. So about a month ago, I had some stuff happen that threw me for a loop, mentally and emotionally. And I tend to bottle things up, and I don't really process emotions very well. And so, on this particular day, there was a lot of stress going on with work. That basically pushed me to the point of, I would say, officially a, a nervous breakdown. Um, let me see if I need to zoom in a little bit. Or not nervous breakdown, but a panic attack. Because, um, like, literally for over an hour, it was like I could not breathe. And that was really, really scary. And if you subscribe to the theory of everything happens for a reason, once I got a little bit of a grip and got the, the lid back on my bottle, I was back driving the truck because I had to pull it over for a little while and calm down. I couldn't, couldn't continue driving at that particular moment. So, um, but once I got a little bit of a grip and got back on the road, to kind of just relax and take my mind off stuff, I opened up YouTube on my phone and just kind of let it play the next recommended for you video. And for some reason, YouTube algorithm popped up a video of a an actor, a Broadway actor, a singer, performer, I don't know. His name is Jeremy Jordan, so you can Google him and look him up. But the first thing that popped up was a video entitled The Day I Saved the Greatest Showman, which I've seen the movie. I love musicals. I've seen a ton of musicals, and that's probably why it popped up in my recommended. Um, 
And so it's like a 13 minute video where um, he talks about how like he was called in to do the demos and then at like the big presentation and Hugh Jackman couldn't sing because he'd had surgery and had stitches in his nose. And um, anyway, you can go watch the video. But anyway, so when he sang, started singing the first song, blew me away. Boy can sing, okay? And so that basically got me searching for him, going, who the heck is this guy? And why have I never heard of him before? And I really, really fell down the rabbit hole. Let's see if I can do this without dropping everything over here. Um, and I found some other videos that he's done of covers of songs, original songs, songs from musicals. A couple of my current favorites that I listen to quite a bit are um, Total Eclipse of the Heart and it's all coming back to me now, so Google those as well. And like I said, fell down the rabbit hole. So came up from the rabbit hole for Breath of Air. And I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I mean, I am way too old to be fangirling. I'm sure that I... I well exceed the age limit for fangirl. And it's really not that vibe. Because really my first, I guess, rational thought was he gives off this I'm everybody's best friend vibe that I was really soaking up on that particular day. So that was my first rational thought was, huh, will you be my friend? So, um... Being that that's where my head is, and he's, he says a lot of things in interviews and podcasts and stuff that are, it's really making me think about um, where I'm at, where I'm going, what's going on in my life, what's happened in my past, things that I need to process that I haven't yet. I don't know, a whole lot of deep, depressing stuff, maybe not depressing, but. Not exactly chipper stuff, and I'm not going to dump all that on you guys. But, basically, he's making me think, and he is seriously undermining the structural integrity of my metaphorical walls. So, I have been dealing with that, and, like I said, I just feel like I'm drawing a lot from him, taking a lot from him, accepting a lot from him, I don't know. Um... And so I felt like I needed to give something back. So I'm going to do this frame and send it to him. And hopefully he gets it because I have to send it to the Broadway theater where he's currently starring as uh, Jay Gatsby as in The Great Gatsby on Broadway. And while me getting to New York is not out of the realm of possibility... Financially, it's a little bit out of the realm right now. And so I actually contacted his, like, wow, that is so crooked. Um, like his team, his <sighs> social media team. God, I told you guys, my brain is like, hmm. And uh, asked if there was, like, a post office box or somewhere to send physical mail to, or would I be better off just sending it to the theater? And I uh, actually got a reply in like 20 minutes, which is that was awesome. And they recommend that I send it to the theater, so that is what I'm going to do. Along with, you know, just a little letter. Kind of explaining why and what, what he's currently doing for me, and... All that kind of stuff. So, since he's, I guess you could say, my current happy place. I'm very focused on creating this for him. So, um, but yeah. But my original thought was, because um, he has a five-year-old daughter. I think she's five. And 
So I was going to kind of just do, you know, best friends forever kind of theme picture frame. And then I couldn't remember the dog's name. And so then I started Googling it. And then that's when I came across the post that Riley is no longer with us and has gone the way of the Rainbow Bridge. So I am sad about that, but also thankful that I came across that post before I did a wildly inappropriate chipper, happy, happy puppy frame that probably wouldn't have gone over well. So anyway, all right. So again, this is the Galaxy Glitter clay and that's I'm using for the four buttons and as we've talked about this is a mixed media mosaic and so you want to mix your media because I actually had charms that were um, you know dog bone and dog house and dog bowl but I needed to pull in you know different different media so, adding in just four of the buttons. All right. And then we'll do my four silver charms. Lost a heart. There it is. I've actually never used this color before, so I do not know if it's going to change color after baking or not, but we're going to find out. So... And I have no idea if this is going to match decor or anything like that, but I figure shades of blues and grays and silvers are kind of, it's all neutral, so hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll work. So, anyway. And then, it today is Wednesday. I was canceled tonight. Well, it didn't say canceled, it said reserve status. But it was 5.30, and usually if they're going to have me do something else, I have that information by, say, 4 o'clock, 4.30 at the latest. And so it was 5.30, so I fixed myself something to eat and got in my comfy PJs and sat down to eat. And then literally as soon as I sat down, my phone started going off with the dispatches, and I was just like, really? And it was very confusing. I did not understand what they were wanting me to do, and then finally got an explanation that Basically, I was going to one place, picking up an empty trailer, and then moving it, I don't know, like 15 miles away to a different place that needed the empty trailer so they could load it. So, and I was supposed to do that twice. So, I picked up the first empty trailer, no problem, and I put the address in my truck GPS of where I was supposed to be going to, and... While I've lived in Kansas City since 2019, I don't, I don't go out, you guys. You know that. I'm totally a homebody. Like, sometimes I, I mean, it was probably a year before I had to stop Googling how to get to the Walmart. I mean, it's just really bad. But, you know, I know how to get to work. I know how to get to the highway because it's really close to my house. And I know how to get out of the city to get to where I need to go. But, um, basically the area I was in, I was not familiar with at all. And so I'm following my GPS and it takes me off the highway and I immediately know I'm in a not good spot. And so I went to get back on the highway. Couldn't get back on the highway. There was an exit ramp, but no entrance ramp. So I'm hitting reroute on my GPS and it's telling me, yeah, go this way for the shipper. And I follow the GPS and it says arrived at your destination. And I'm looking around going, nope, don't think so. I don't know where I was at. It was pitch black. I was by the river. It was just a bunch of burned out, rundown buildings. I could hear a lot of yelling going on. And then I heard distinctly like four or five gunshots. And so now I need to get the heck out of there, except for my GPS is wanting me to go 
down roads that are not okay for trucks. Like low clearance bridges, things like that. And I was pretty well and truly terrified. So I finally, and then I put it in on my phone. But my phone is not set for truck routes. It's set for okay to drive on a car. <coughs> but when I put the address in of the place I was supposed to be going to on my phone, it pulled up a place that was like literally eight miles from where I was at. So my truck GPS didn't have me anywhere near where I was supposed to be. And the route that it was wanting me to go to get to where I was supposed to be wanted me to do things like flip a U-turn in the middle of a highway, which not only impossible with a 72-foot truck and trailer, but also illegal. And then, I mean, yeah, it just got worse and worse and worse, and the sirens and cops everywhere. And So when I got back on the highway, I called my dispatcher, and I'm like, they can have somebody take this empty trailer to that shipper in the morning when it's daylight and people can see where they're going. I'm not doing it. I do not feel safe. I am taking it back to our yard. I'm dropping it and I am going home. Because I was really, really shook up. So. Anyway. And which means that. I don't know what that's going to mean in regards to my pay for tonight. Because as you know. If. I'm not driving, I don't get any money. And although freight has picked up a little bit, part of my issues at the beginning of the month and the end of last month was um, literally only working two days out of five. And I lost the equivalent of my rent last month in lost wages because of there not being freight and so financially stressed emotionally stressed nice little panic attack which basically is blown the lid off my emotional bottling and it erupted like freaking Mount Vesuvius and trying to get the lid back on or at least get it back under control and I'm getting there, but it's also opened me up to thinking about a lot of stuff about, you know, basically, what am I working towards? You know, what are my goals? What am I, you know, am I just working to pay the bills and feed the cats until I die? That's kind of depressing. That's not living. That's just existing. So, but then when I try to think, well, what do I want to work towards? I'm not coming up with anything. So, I don't know. So there's a whole lot of inner thought going on. Which, that's one thing that's good when you're driving a truck. You got plenty of time to think. So. Anyway. So that's kind of what's been going on with me. And that's enough of the depressing stuff. But, um. I need a new baggie. Because I don't have one for that color. And I'm sorry for the sniffles, you guys. I honestly do not know what's going on. Um. But I just can't seem to. Get it under control. So, all right, I'll do the label for that later. Okay, where are we at now? Come on, Sherry. Get it together. Get it together. So here's where we're at so far, you guys. We got our our. It's hailing right now. Our uh, buttons and our charms embedded. And I think we'll do the words next. So, and I don't know that I'll use all four. I might only use two. I don't know. Where did the, um, let's see, those are going to be on Navy. Do I want to do these on Navy? I feel like those need to be on the, the light silver. Hang on, guys, thinking. Because I might do these on the silver with the navy blue ink. And then do all the doggy things on the navy blue clay with the silver ink. And that's 
kind of what I'm leaning towards, and I'll tell you why. Because I do want to hit the little dog with uh, some white mica powders, and then also it's, he's got a little red heart in the middle of his chest, which I will probably just do alcohol ink for, or maybe, you know what? Stand by. Oops. Where's my... Let me see if I have got... How small is it? I do have these little red heart brads. I might do that. I don't know if I have any that are smaller. I think that's the smallest ones I've got. Yeah. Uh, let me see. But anyway, so yeah. So his name is Jeremy, and his wife's name is Ashley. She's also a... Um, performer and singer and actress and whatnot. And then... Like I said, they have a, a little a little daughter named Clara. I might be uh, embedding this little red heart right there. Instead of trying to color it. Yep. Alright, and so... Silver ink on the maybe. Okay. Um, and of course I'm... A wee bit jealous of... Actually, I have white ink. I think we might use the white ink instead of silver. Um, not jealous, but, you know, I, I know that they know how blessed they are to have the family that they have. And that was, uh, ooh, that was pretty loud thunder. Not in the cards for me. Um... So, sadly, that was a dream I had to let go of. Having, um, having babies. Um, when my nephew was, like, three years old, he said, he couldn't say my name properly. It was really cute. So, he called me Sari. And he says, Aunt Sari. I says, yes, Bo. And he says, you'd be a really good mommy. You need to have babies. And I said, well, I wish I could have babies, but I can't. And he said, why not? And I said, well, my baby making parts are broken. And he sat there and kind of processed that for a minute. And then he says to me, do you need a Band-Aid? <laughs> oh, love that kid. He's about to turn 15. God, that makes me feel old. So, um... It is really coming down out there right now. So, but I don't know, you guys. What do you think? Is 50 years old way too old to be going all fangirl? And I don't really feel fangirl. I, I'm being honest. I don't. I mean, is he attractive? Yeah. But I'm not all like, you know, ooh baby, ooh baby. Boy can sing. Definitely attracted to that. But it's more of just like a friend little brother vibe. So, so hopefully that doesn't drop me into the, um, you know, creepy, scary fangirl category because I don't know, like I, like I said, I'm just now starting to learn about him, seen a couple of his movies, listened to a ton of podcasts and interviews and whatnot. And then, like I said, I go listen to him sing. And it's bringing me joy and happiness. So, and I just feel like he might appreciate, as opposed to the, the standard stereotypical, you're so amazing, you're so hot, you're so talented, that he might like to know that, at least in my world, he's making an impact on a much much deeper level and if that makes me 
weird, crazy fangirl, then I guess so be it. So, we're just going to go with it. So, all right. So, this is pearl clay, which is soft and squishy. So, I don't want to push down too hard. I just need to make sure I get the ink bonded to the clay. And we're going to see how this comes out. Top of the L didn't stamp. Sorry, my head's going to be in there for a second. We're going to see if I can fix it. Or if I'm going to have to do it over. I hate that. Yay! And OMG, you guys. I don't have any baby wipes in here. Let's just see it. We'll just use paper, paper towels for now. I just bought new baby wipes in there. They have not made it to the craft room yet. So that is love is a four-legged word. And then let's do love rescued me. So normally I wouldn't film this whole thing because you guys have seen enough of my videos of everything that I do. But I'm not real sure. But I think there's a possibility he might be interested in seeing the process. Or at least the, um, maybe the final reveal video where I talk about it. That'll be a separate one, so. Right now we're just, this is part one, we're going to get everything stamped out and embedded and into the oven. And that'll be part one, so. And since I've been neglecting you guys for the last month, I figured I would give you some uh, decent quality time. But just know that I haven't forgotten about you guys. You've been in my thoughts. I just haven't been able to really come up with it. All right. Um... So I'm going to do the top first because that's more of a straight line than the, the bottom. And the last thing I want to do is be crooked. So and there is kitty hair. Son of a gun. Okay, we're okay. Anyway, so we are going to do the top first. And of course, I'm using my grid lines. And then we're going to do the sides, and then we'll do the bottom. And if my head's getting in the shot, I apologize. After I uh, drop the empty trailer and park the truck and got in my car, and I had a couple prescriptions that I needed to pick up at Walgreens, and... There's a Chipotle across the street, and God knows I did not want to come home and cook, so. Um, so I stopped and got Chipotle. I was very disappointed, though, because they were open for another hour and a half, but they were out of peppers and onions, which I just do burrito bowls, and I get extra peppers and onions. But they were out, and they were not going to make any more, even though they still had an hour and a half to go. And so I was like, well, that's fine. I've usually got a bag of frozen peppers and onions in my freezer. I'll just make my own. But apparently that's what I did the last time I got Chipotle because I do not have any more peppers and onions in my freezer. Don't have much of anything in my freezer right now. So love is a four-legged word. So I didn't make it to the grocery store this last weekend was going to and then I woke up Saturday feeling very yucky and so I spent most of the weekend doing a whole lot of nothing cats were thrilled except for when they felt it was time for me to head down to the kitchen and feed them and I wasn't heading in that direction 
And, you know, keep in mind, they have um, dry food out all the time. Because you never know when something might happen and I may not make it back for the night if my truck breaks down or whatever. So they have plenty of dry food constantly available. And, um, but they do get a little bit of canned wet food twice a day. And Garfield in particular would not shut up. Uh, finally, I had to get up and go down and give him some. I'm like, God, jeez. So, and that's why I don't have a dog because, you know, I'm gone on a normal work day, 12 to 14 hours. And can't leave a dog unattended that long unless they have the ability to, you know, get outside by themselves. And for security reasons, where I live, and I wouldn't leave a dog unattended anyway. They tend to disappear in this neighborhood. And the only time you can take a dog on the truck with you, love rescued me, um, is if they are an emotional support animal. But then you have the stigma of needing an emotional support animal. And then they start wondering whether you're mentally capable of driving the truck. So, And then also, I don't even stop for bathroom breaks. So if I had to stop for bathroom breaks for a dog, it would irritate me because I'm not paid per hour and paid per mile. So I leave Kansas City and I don't stop till I get to St. Louis, which is the uh, swap point where me and my, uh, the driver I meet up with meet up. And then we swap and I use the bathroom and grab something to eat or drink if I need it. And then I'm back in the truck and rolling the four and a half hours back. So, okay. So if I had to like pull over two or three times so a dog could go, yeah, that would be. Just don't have it in me. But yeah, there's been some stuff going on at work. I don't know why my dispatcher has decided to draw this line in the sand where I am standing my ground that I'm contending it's a safety issue. He is saying it's not, but frankly, his opinion doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I'm the one driving the truck. And if I say it's not safe, then that should be all that matters. And... So when I discussed that with him and he didn't seem to care. So I went up the chain of command to the next person up the chain of command and explained the situation, which long story short, basically in certain styles of trucks, because I am short and round, the steering wheel does not move freely. It's up against me or by the time I'm far enough away for it to not be up against me, then my short little arms and legs have problems reaching the steering wheel. Now, being a professional driver that has done this for 12 years, can I compensate for that? Yes. But should I have to? No. And the compensation essentially puts a lot of strain on neck, back, hips, knees, and as I said, I just turned 50. I don't have a whole lot of plans in my life right now, but in regards to driving, I plan to drive until I physically can't anymore or until I'm dead, whichever happens first. And, but I don't see any reason to rush along the physically can't anymore if we can postpone that as long as possible. So I've requested a specific brand of truck, which we have available. And for whatever reason, he is literally going out of his way to make sure I am not in the trucks that I'm, and I'm not asking for a specific truck. There are like 20 or 30 of this particular model. And he's just, for lack of a better term, and I try to keep this clean, but he's, he's well, we will. He's being a jerk, okay? So I went above him to the next, person up, which I don't normally do. That's not how I operate, but this has been months and months and months. And like I said, I was, I ended up having a full on panic attack. So I was like, well, okay, so something's got to be done. So I go to his boss and you want to know what his boss said? His boss said, it's not a safety issue. It's your preference. 
and I will do my best to get you in the truck you prefer, but you need to do your best to lose some weight because you being overweight is not a safety concern. So you need to do your best to lose some weight. That's what I was told. And if you think that didn't pretty much complete my spiral of what just happened, emotional stress, yeah, it did. Um, so I was ready to get out of there and go work for somebody else, but I don't want to go start over at a new company when I have 12 years in with this company. If I go to a new company, I have to go back over the road for at least two years. And, you know, I've already done that and it was an adventure. And I don't want to do it again. So, um, one of the contacts in the, within the company that I contacted when I told her what happened, even though I asked her to keep it to herself, she took it upon herself to um, contact HR on my behalf. So now HR is involved. And I don't know. We haven't had our meeting yet, so I don't know how it's going to play out. But it's just very frustrating because it's like... Really, really simple. All I want is, you know, put me in the Freightliner. That's my truck of preference. Try to give me a load every day and leave me alone. That's pretty much all I'm asking. So, yeah. So we'll see how it plays out. So there. Now you guys are caught up on what's been going on. And it sucks. And that's all I have to say. So, alright. So we got XOXO. And the doggy. Let's see how this comes out. I might end up doing this on white clay or something. We'll have to see. And I know you're thinking, why aren't I doing red ink for the XOXO? Those of you in the crafting world know how hard it is to actually find a true red in anything. In paint, in clay, and in ink. And I don't like any of the red ink that I have. So, so we're going to do it in white. Alright, here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh my god, that's so awesome. Okay. Alright, and then we're gonna... I better do the mica powders first. Hold on. What I dislike about these is they don't say what, that's, that looks like it's gold. That looks white. Okay. A little paintbrush. Kind of feel like I need a little bit of, I don't know. I'll just go with this and see how it looks. Get a little bit on the edge of the brush and let's start coloring in. I'm not filling it in completely. I don't care that a little bit of the blue is going to show through because with the mica powders, it's just the hint. And I'm going to get a different white for his, like, mustache area and his chest area. So this isn't really a true white. It's almost kind of a silvery white. 
or that could just be because it's blue clay. Like I said, I might come back and do this on white with uh, white clay with black ink. But we're going to try it this way first. Alright, I have a different white. It, oops, get it pulled out. Yep, this is just micro pearl. Let's see how this comes out. If it's a different color, if it's the same color. No, it looks a little different. Pretty happy with that. Because again, it's just a hint. Alright, now we're going to cut off the little metal prongs. And we're going to embed this little red heart right in the middle of it. And then we're going to cut it out. And that's probably going to be the end of video one because I obviously need some Benadryl or something. And I don't want to be sniffling, sniffling. So, well, no. I'll probably make you guys stick around for another few more minutes because I'll do the uh, dog things real quick. Those aren't going to take me very long. Come on, cut off. God, I need to sharpen those. All right. Tweezer. Wait a minute. There we go. The glue on my hands. So anyway, so I hope he likes this. I hope his family likes it. Um I plan on, in the letter that I'm going to include with it, asking if he might be willing to open it. Um, wow. And that just hit the floor. Not even going to try and find it. We're just going to get another one. Um, and he does a lot of videos, like, you know, shorts and video shorts and TikToks and what, I don't even know what the heck they're all called. But, so... There is a slight chance that he might be willing to record it, which would make me deliriously happy because my greatest joy when I create these is seeing people's faces when they receive them. And like I said, I could wait and see if I ever make it to Broadway and catch him, but then I would be competing with the fangirls outside the stage door and I've seen a few videos here lately of the utter madness that that is, and I, I can't even picture being part of that, so. Um, so we're going to go with the mail. Oops. And then that also gives me the opportunity to write down exactly what it is I want to say. And I feel like if I was to try and do it in person, I would either get emotional or clam up so all right tweezers are not working so we're gonna see if I get lucky and drop this in the right spot here ready excuse my head what do you think you guys I think it's all right I think that's better than all right. I'm very happy with that. All right. And then after I bake it, I'll see if it pops off. And if it pops off, I will put a dot of glue under it and stick it back down. Yeah. 
I think this is going to be the end of it. And then I'll do the dog toys and the silver leafing on part two. And, and also the silhouettes, dog silhouettes that I wanted to do. So yeah, so I think that's a good stopping point. All right, so here's where we're at at this point, and my OCD will not let me do this. Put it down here. So there, there's where we're at so far on tiles for this project. Oh, and then the stickers. Bring those back in. All right, you guys, so that's it for part time. Part, wow. That's it for part one. And tune in for part two where we will be doing all of these dog themed toys and whatnot. And the silver leafing. That's it for now, you guys. Thanks so much for watching.